So last week we talked about the litany of trust, which has become very popular and be, become part of the devotional life of many people. And we, we shared a little bit of the story of where it came from. Today we're going to go kind of a little bit more, more specific and just like in growing in trust and why this is such an important area for our spiritual life. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. I'm Sister Faustina and I'm a Sister of Life. And this is Ascension Presents. So trust is a great topic and it's one that's not talked about nearly as much as it should be, I think. Um, I think a lot of people, when they hear the word trust, get a little scared because they've been betrayed. We've all been betrayed individually, communally, in many ways. Um, and so trust is something that sounds unattainable or impossible or, or even undesirable from a lot of people, unrealistic. And yet trust really opens us up to the fullness of life, trust in Jesus particularly, um, the one who made us. So I would love to share a little bit about what I've learned, and I'm just still learning, but uh, about this huge gift and this invitation of the Lord. And when I started looking into trust a little bit more, I realized that it's not defined in the catechism, unfortunately. And Thomas Aquinas isn't, you know, as direct as, as he is with so many other things about what it is. So it leaves a lot of people wondering, well, what is it exactly? Well, it relates to a lot of familiar things like hope, which we're, we're, we know a little bit about. And when we trust Jesus, it's similar to faith, you know, this ascent to a, the person of Jesus and what he says and who he is as a person. And yet, what is trust? And I, I'm a very visual person, so I'm going to describe it in a little bit of a visual way so uh, I can help you kind of understand a little bit about it to unpack how we can apply it to our lives and our relationship with Christ. So I love to picture the heart, our human hearts, with these two openings, um, this kind of uh, opening on one side to receive this love, this life that God gives us freely, unconditionally, a share of his own life. And then another large opening on the other side, because we're meant to, to share our life. Our life is a gift. We're supposed to, to share the love that we've received and almost be like this unique prism of God's love in the world. And yet this open quality, which is written into us, is part of who we are in a broken world where there's sin and there is betrayal and, and distrust uh, for good reasons. Um, we feel this open quality like as a, as a real poverty and insecurity. Like I don't want to receive other people's um, love and, or, or a love that defines me. Like I, I don't know. I don't want to be defined by things coming external to me. Or I don't want my destiny, you know, to be, you know, on uh, taking the risk of loving other people, you know. So this gives us a real sense of um, relationship, which is good, but also the sense of neediness and vulnerability. But what I found with this is it's beautiful that this is the core of who we are. And the core of who we are is actually good. It's good that we are made for relationship. And God, who is limitless love, who is unconditional love, speaks this to us in, in very clear ways. But Trust is what lets our, our hearts kind of stay open to this beautiful flow of love that we're made for, that kind of makes us come alive. So we'd rather in this world kind of, you know, close our hearts, you know, close these openings, these doors of our hearts when things are difficult, when suffering comes. So I'd rather not be defined by, by others. I'd rather define myself or I'd rather find happiness on my own terms, you know, and not take the risk of love. And that's very easy to, to, to live like that and feel that. But at the same time, it kind of cripples us and something in our heart shuts down. We don't, we're not ourselves. And we really do feel like we're, we're um, half alive inside and we're, we're constantly drained and we're looking for that something more and we never, we never know what it is. Love is what brings us to life and we need to trust to receive that love and then to also give that love, be a bearer of that love. And really, to revive trust in our hearts, we need to trust Jesus because He is the trustworthy one. He incarnate, God coming down to earth, shows us that the ultimate rejection, which He suffered in life uh, when He came down and suffered and died on the cross for us, and yet had a, a love that was, was far greater than that, that nothing could destroy. He shares that, the power of that love with us. That is our love. That's the love that He pours into us. That's the love that defines us that we can trust so that we learn to trust what God's voice is, who He says I am. And when I know who I am, and I've learned to trust His voice and, and believe that voice, then m my entire relations with everyone else becomes all the more easy. Like, I, I know who I am, and I can, I can share a limitless love, a merciful love, because the love that I have is greater than any rejection or, or pain or suffering in this life. 
So I found really in trust, um, which there's many practical ways of applying it, I found that in trusting God and placing our trust in Him is not only a way to freedom and simplicity to kind of cut out what's not important or or to kind of place our, our hope and trust in, in something greater and secure, which is God's eternal love. But it's it's a way to find, find God. I don't know if that's too bold to say, but I really feel like I've found God through this experience of learning to trust Him. It's like you're, you get to know somebody, you know, maybe from their externals, you see what they wear or like how their voice sounds or how they interact with others. And then you get to talk to them yourselves. It's like a whole other experience of, of this person. And I've found that with trusting God, that when I take that step out and say, okay, this is what I've heard you say to people, but I want you to say it to me. And this is what I've said to people, but I haven't said to you, and I'm going to say it to you. And I enter into that relationship with him where of openness, this open relationship of trust with God. The answers that he gives, the way he reveals himself, it, it's, it defines me. And I, I know that I don't have to define myself. I am known. He reveals me to myself, and I can share that gift of my life and love with others and encourage them to know the, the beautiful um, goodness of their own life as well. What would you say for those who, uh, you mentioned so many folks have, have kind of been hurt, mm-hmm. even through the actions of the people, through circumstances of life, yeah. and uh, trust just seems so kind of like mm-hmm. scary or hard, or it just kind of touches mm-hmm. at that, that wound. Like what would be maybe, maybe a first step, or what would you say to somebody in that cir- situ- yeah. situation? It's very difficult, and God never belittles our pain. You know, I would say that. He always um, sees the places that no one else sees and loves us and, and holds us in those places. I can say that only God's love is greater. And we've all suffered things and we have tried to find ways to heal on our own or we think we know what's best. But only God can make what's broken whole again. Only God can actually explode into life what seems dead and barren. So even though it's very mysterious what God allows, um, entering into this honest place of openness with God, precisely in those places of pain, is only going to bring what He always brings, life, mercy, um, goodness, and things that do not pass away for all eternity. The sufferings of this life will pass, but God's mercy and goodness and glory will never pass, which He desires to share with us forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Sister. One yeah. of the, as, as we mentioned last week, Sister recently wrote a book, Jesus, I Trust in You, a 30-day retreat with a litany of trust, which is being put out by the St. Paul Center. And one of your, the chapters dealing with one of the invocations of the, the litany is essentially, my understanding of it, it's like, it's just this reminder that even growing in trust with Jesus isn't something that's totally dependent on us. Mm-hmm. That we don't have to fake it or manufacture <laughs> or just or just will it, um, but that He's with us in it. And He's, he's as you kind of said so, so well, just kind of tenderly bringing us on the journey and, mm-hmm. and ultimately growing to the fullness of the trust, which um, is, is his right, like which, which he wants to invite us to. Like he's there helping us grow in that trust as well. Yeah. So, so I do encourage you to, um, to continue to pray the litany of trust, to continue to ask in for, for the grace from the Lord to grow in this area uh, of your life. I do think, um, again, praying with the crucifix is this beautiful uh, kind of insight into the heart of God and who he is and a great place, again, to grow in trust. And then if you'd like to pick up Sister Faustina's book, uh, you can go to stpaulcenter.com or check out the link down below. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's not being put out by Ascension, but it's such a central and important theme that we're very grateful to, to share what God's doing with Sister Faustina and the Litany of the Trust and to accompany you and aid you on that journey yourselves. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thanks yeah. for being with us, Sister. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next week. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos poco a poco. Little by little, we're going to make it. God bless y'all.